guests today are Kenyatta Rivers, and Rob Reedy. We join their conversation in the faculty lounge. These two houses down and and have no idea about the things that they do, the things that they enjoy, the kind of work they do. I mean, something is sad about that to me. I mean, it just it just seems like, you know, at least at the least, I should know, you know, that you have this kind of occupation or you have um, these kinds of interests. But we don't know much um, about each other's adults, so certainly we can't fault. You know, see, I don't even like email for that reason. Right. I, I mean, I, it's important. Email, yes. the internet, the computer, all important, mm -hmm. critical to mm -hmm. our way of living and communicating with one another. I got that's not the issue. The, the issue that with me and all that is, is that there is something ter lost uh, that's terrible when people don't get together and look at each other eye to eye. I don't, I, I can't put my finger on it. Mm -hmm. I, it. It could be many different things. But, but uh, I mean, today and, you know, in departments and across the university and universities, mm -hmm. not UCF, mm -hmm. just like, everything's email. You know, well, you get no voice inflection. You get no personal Right, contact. it's two-dimensional. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I hate it because uh, uh, it, it's almost like we're, wasting the mind trust mm -hmm. or the brain trust, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not fully, be, it's not being fully developed. And, and I it, worry about that, you know, slipping away. Sure, you know, sure, maybe sure. Not, maybe it's not, maybe it's just my own paranoia. Well, I, I mean, sometimes I feel the same way. I mean, in fact, had it not been for this situation today, I wouldn't have known a whole lot about the things that you've talked about in mm -hmm. terms of art. Um, so, so I concur, I, you know, I, I, in fact, I don't even have voicemail on my cell phone. I mean, I mean, I have an answer machine at home, answer machine at work, um, um, internet service at work, internet service at home. You know, I've got a cell phone, a house phone. You know, uh, it's just you know, and I to me, and I and there may not be any truth to this, but sometimes I feel that's one of the reasons that people are so stressed. They never can get away. I mean, they always yeah. they always are monitored by something. And so when I go certain places, I said, you know. Um, you either need to call me before this time or after this time because during this time period, I won't have my cell phone on. Man, my students yeah. do not understand right. that, man. <laughs> I, I even I even get that in my evaluations. Yeah. It's like uh, there are times I won't take emails, I won't take voicemail, uh, I am unavailable. Mm -hmm. And even um, uh, my wife gets upset about that sometimes. You know, she says, I couldn't reach you. And I went like, well, was it an emergency? No, but I, I said, well, then I don't want you to reach me. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't want anybody to reach me. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, to show you how bad it is, I mean, I, you know, um, you go in the restroom, someone is on the cell phone. I mean, it's like, come on, what is going on here? I mean, it's like, I mean, can you ever get away? I mean, that's but, exactly right. But, but I, 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 I um, um, you know, and I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy right. um, seeing people um, and, and all the cultural things that come in, you know, the, the body language. Um, one of the courses I teach um, um, deals with that, you know, certain cultures stand closer to their conversational partners than other cultures and, and stuff. And so I'm really big into cultures. And so I try to deliberately go to different cultural events throughout the year, some things that are Latino based, some things that are Asian based, some things that um, are African American based, things that um, that are Native American based, which are few and far between it seems. I wish I could find more activities that right. um, focus on that particular group. Um, things that um, that are very centered around European cultures, because I think the more we know about other people, the less fear we have about other people. And I think that's why sometimes we're very fearful of groups because we don't know enough about them. Oh, that's absolutely correct. And so, um, my, well, at least in my yeah. mind. It's yeah, so, and I, and I deliberately um, put myself in those kinds of um, situations where I have to learn about somebody else. I mean, it's one thing for it to be mandated because it's a class assignment or um, um, a conference that you go to because it's related to your job, but it's another thing when you go because you choose to go. Right. And a lot of, the thing, a lot of those things I choose to go to because I want to know why does this group, you know, why do they do these things? And things that appear to be odd to us are quite normal in well, that group. 
you were you you know this is what is so difficult in the arts music theater art you know um, is because the our cultures are so diverse mm -hmm. um, is that in order to reach an international uh, group like that the ability of an artist to transcend cultures or the cross cultures and communicate with many different kinds of people that can enjoy mm -hmm. a work of art or a play or a piece of music is god that is mm -hmm. so difficult mm -hmm. to do because we are so diverse i mean mm -hmm. like if in one culture and i talk to my students about this all the time you have to be very careful do not design something like uh you were in a closet you know in your hometown at your uh, mm -hmm. home it has to be designed especially if it's going to be manufactured in the audience the target audience that you're trying mm -hmm. to reach whether it's a gallery music you have to be respectful of these different cultures mm -hmm. and be aware that you may say x on a canvas but some other culture some other person may see y well, what do you do <laughs> okay now in clinical professions that's interesting because in clinical professions um we somewhat by our associations and stuff like that are somewhat mandated in a sense for lack of a better term um, to expose our students to different cultures and beliefs and values so that when they're interacting with these clinical populations they have um, they, they have a great you know they have greater respect and and awareness that okay I may do this with this group but I may not be able to do this with this group for these various reasons what do you do in the humanities to help increase students awareness of differences in groups like in art because you gave the example of art what right. do you do in art um, to help your students know that 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 may not be an accurate picture of a Native American culture in fact I had a um, one of the class assignments that I have in my multicultural aspects course is um, some of the students will be assigned to take children's books and take a look at the pictures and what's written about um, different groups and see if that information is accurate. And one of my students, and I didn't even know this, one of my students um, or a group of them did a project and they um, did on Native Americans. And the book that they picked represented a particular tribe and it had all these horses and whatever else. And come to find out, if you trace the history, they didn't really do that much with horses. You see what I'm saying? So, so I expose my students in speech language pathology to those kinds of things. What do you do? and art to expose your students to different cultures so that when they're doing drawings and whatever whatever else. Well, because we have we are a visual language, we have uh, a huge library of things. We, we show them things. For instance, you mentioned cowboys mm -hmm. or what are, are horses. Uh, have you ever seen a real cowboy? I mean, I ask my students this all the time. I said, I know you've seen Gene Autry and John mm -hmm. Wayne. I said, but do you know that they were African American yeah, cowboys? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I said, do you, have you ever seen a real? They don't look like that. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. You know, so you have to be careful about how you depict something, and you, um, uh, it's like uh, you hear people talk about war all the time, and 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 their opinions about war. Have you ever been in war? I mean, you know, have you inter ever interviewed someone that's been in war, or do you just have an opinion? But know? do you do that? Oh, absolutely. I'm saying, in other words, absolutely. You know, to help them gain a better understanding of absolutely. war. Absolutely. I show them as many um, uh, cross-references and multicultural imagery as I possibly can to, to help them understand that your first solution to this may not be your best, and it may not be uh, as thought out, uh, as well thought out as possible. You might need to do some more research. With well, that. see, this is what I'm wondering, though, because, like you say, you show them imagery and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but do you have them as an assignment to talk to somebody who was in war? Because a Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I do a, uh, I have a, um, I've changed my entire curriculum, mm -hmm. the way I teach my classes, and it's all, uh, for lack of a better term, reality-based. Mm -hmm. Um, all my classes are competitions, mm -hmm. and they're all um, uh, have a, f a beginning and an ending with a finished product. Mm -hmm. And they're people that are chosen to actually do commissioned artwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are freshmen and sophomore okay. students, but they have to do the research. I'm talking about background research, budgets. I mean everything. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because 
artists can design these beautiful things and they're completely unreal. They can't even be manufactured, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they put them out and they go like, oh, well, I didn't want people to feel that way when they looked at it. And I said, well, you should have thought about that earlier. And mm -hmm. when you put things out, people are going to have opinions about mm -hmm. it. We have to research that thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that even with our best research, you put it out there and you're going to be, you know, you're going to experience the scrutiny and the opinions of the general public. Mm -hmm. See, because I, my, my perception would be, uh, or is, is that if you, um, you know, I, because I was good for that. I would have my students research this and research that, but I found that my students came, you know, they, they had a better understanding of some of the topics we were talking about when I actually had them to talk to a person. Um, who was from, uh, who was in a wheelchair. I mean, you know, you can read all the great articles about how a person feels, you know, when they have a handicap or, um, or what have you, but when they actually talk to a person who... You get a totally different They get a totally different yeah. picture. And so that's why I was wondering, like, when, they're, when your students are preparing to do a certain work, I know they can go to the library, they can look at certain books and, um, and so on and so forth, but if they're going to... Uh, do a drawing of a person who lives in a rural setting, do they actually go and talk to a person who lives in a rural setting before they, they do? They, they don't always do that. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, or a person who's from, right. they don't even have to be living there now. You know, no. One of the ways I tap into that is have my students in class form small groups and, you know, and, and given a topic and then I let them talk about that topic, but I oftentimes find that as they're talking about that topic, they start sharing their own personal experiences. And so I may do a great job in teaching, but I find that many times my students do even a better job than I do because they're able to share with each other what they've gone through and places they've been and places they like to go. Well, we do that. Yeah, we okay. do. We, we critique, and I, I, I actually spend very little time telling them, you know, the uh, Kingsfield myth, you know, mm -hmm. or the uh, I've got the information and you don't kind mm -hmm. of format. I put them in small groups and they work in teams together so that they get that kind of cross fertilization. Mm -hmm. What I can't stand mm -hmm. is uh, the let's live in a cardboard box for a day so that we can in, uh, understand <laughs> the homeless project right. that I see on campus from time to time or, or any campuses, you know. It's like uh, those kids get the get up the next day and go take a shower and, and eat a pizza, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you really want to know about homeless, then live Both out there the, for a year, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. You know, and, yeah. and uh, uh, you know, uh, th then we'll talk about homeless. But one of the things we try to do in my classes is, is to help them understand themselves better and where I, they grew up and let that be the inspiration for the way they make art because that is what they're an expert in, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, they're the single greatest expert in the world about what it's like for Susan to grow up in Hattiesburg, Mississippi mm -hmm. on Elm Street or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and not while they're influenced and, and um, experience multiculturalism and stuff like that, uh, out of respect, let's focus on what you know best and uh, and then maybe how these things influence you. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it does, because I have to tell you that that is oftentimes the most difficult assignment for my <clears> students <throat> yeah. um, at times, because what they will do is they will go, and in fact, many of them have expertise on different cultures, you know, rather it's because of their upbringing in terms of living next door to a group of people who may have been from this background um, or having traveled to another country, or whatever else. But then I'll say, okay, let's talk about you. I don't know a lot about me. I'm saying, well, you've been with yourself for 360 years. Right, right, right. Therein lies right. the problem. <laughs> right. So, so and, and, and that's a very difficult task. Like, I will, you know, um, ask them to write a, just a little narrative about themselves. And yeah. that is a very hard task. Oh, yeah. Artist because, statements. Right. Oh, God. Right. You think, listen, yeah. uh, projects are nothing. Right. When you have to write that little paragraph, that artist statement about what it is you were trying to do, and you can't refer to anything, you got to talk about you. Yeah. Oh, God, you think I'd, uh, you know, Poured uh, burning coals on yeah, top of yeah. their head. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I thought initially it may be more that they were concerned about self promotion. You know, like I don't, you know, I don't like to do that about myself. But then I start realize it's not always self. The issue of self promotion is like really don't know much about me. Yeah. Um. And so we go through a lot of different activities so that you know 
uh, they can learn about themselves and learn about their families and whatever else. And in fact, um, some of my student comments at the end of the semester, um, you know, the student free responses, they'll say, I learned more about me than I learned about anybody else. Well, let me, let me, yeah. the, what you said right there mm -hmm. to me uh, is the, the single most important key to ensuring that an artist will be an artist, a musician, a musician, mm -hmm. a speech pathologist, mm -hmm. is that knowing who you are and how that translates to what you do, okay? Mm -hmm. People are afraid of that. It's much easier to live off of history mm -hmm. and data that's already been gathered mm -hmm. than to start looking inward and dissecting yourself and, and, and really telling people what you feel and what you mean mm -hmm. and what you're thinking because then when you do that, people will go like, man, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or how about this one? Man, I don't agree with that at all, uh -huh. you know, because where in their 12 years of education sure. to the point, are they ever rewarded for saying, I don't know? Mm -hmm. Do you, you find know? it more difficult for your male students to do that more than your females? I don't know. That'd be that'd be an interesting uh, research project. Uh, um, uh, I don't know because I mean, with with you know, with what I went through and uh, the emergence of feminism and mm -hmm. women's rights and stuff like that, I'm seeing a little more moxie out of the females now, okay. uh, or as much. I, I, it used to be you could see that repressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was repressed, you know, but um, I'm. I'm not really noticing that that much, but I may not be paying attention to it. That may be. It'd be interesting to see because um, um, I have a lot of students, <clears throat> male and female, who have no problems in sharing how they feel. But um, it's interesting, some of my male students will come to me after class and say, you know, I was going to say this in class, but I really didn't think it would be good to say. And I'm like, that's exactly what should have been said. I mean, that could have changed the whole conversation. Why didn't you say They say, I don't really feel. so. That's the well, other you know thing. Because uh, the we so, well, yeah. I, I, the first day of class, I tell my students, man, vulnerability is a strength, not a weakness. Mm -hmm. If you do not understand that, you will. I mean, that's what research is predicated. Mm -hmm. Research is a verb; it mm -hmm. is not a noun. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. we still don't understand that at universities. Mm -hmm. We we promote and, and we uh, reward grants for research. No, they don't. Uh, they reward you for, you know, what have you done? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, research is the path to getting to that, mm -hmm. that product. Or, yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, the, the, it's hard for students to let go of that. that, that well, you know, what? I, I really don't know but I, uh, the answer to the question, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some kind of situation or I'm going to act like I do, and, you know, and so they get into this vicious circle mm -hmm. instead of just saying, I don't understand what you said, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and and how can we, how can we get through this together, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. Instead, it's like, what you don't know, right, right, you right, know? right, right, right. Or if you, uh, how, what's happening in your classroom now that you, when you ask a question to the class, when you say, uh, "Hey, what do you guys think about da 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 da?" -da? Generally. Um, no response. <laughs> that drives me nuts. No response. Right. No response. Going, how many but, hours? Of cre how, how much money does it cost per credit hour right, to go to right, school? Right. 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 <laughs> but you know, but I, but but I sometimes I wonder, have we not done that to ourselves? Because in many situations, K through twelfth grade, I mean, the only time you should be saying something is at the time you raise your hand. Exactly. And yeah. so then they get into a university setting, and all of a sudden, we somehow expect them to say however they feel and whatever else when for the past 12 to 13 years, if you include kindergarten, they really haven't been um, encouraged to do that. So then we all of a sudden, we get them in the university setting and said, okay, well, how come you guys aren't saying anything? Well, for 12, the past 12 to 13 years, you hadn't had the opportunity to do that. So I do a lot of, I try to do a lot of icebreaker kinds of things or um, I know having had conversations with my students after class that they have different opinions and so I'll use that during the next class session so I'll ask a question and I'll call some call on someone on this side of the class and then I'll say well you know Sally you know what do you think about that okay and then I'll hit somebody in the back of the class because um, students at least the number of students I've had over the years tend to have the idea that if I sit in the back of the class they're less likely to call me so I know that so I deliberately call them or um, I have students who um, you know, you ask a question 
And um, in the minute you ask the question, they put their head down thinking, or put their heads down thinking that, okay, if my head is down or I can't see him, he can't see me. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you put your head down, I still see you. Yeah. So that's the ones I'll call. You know, if you put your head down, then it's most likely I'm going to call you because I still see you. And so I want to know what you have to say about this. And um, the other thing I do is I um, uh, do a lot of small group things. And then after they uh, go in their breakout session and I bring them back together, then I'll present that issue to the class and have the group talk. And then I'll ask individuals within the group. Did you agree with that? Well, let me throw yeah. something out at yeah. you here and see what you think about yeah. this. If I were grading the format or the design that we use to educate people in a university setting, I would give that student a C or a D. For doing what? Just the format. Just the, you know, the 15 weeks, I'm up here, you're out there, um, uh, I've got the information, you don't listen, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what it appears, this is just my opinion, it mm -hmm. appears to me that what we've done is this, this format of university education, semester, quarters, is thousands of years old, or hundreds of years old, and all we do is we just keep adding another layer of icing on top of it. Mm -hmm. And now we've added the internet, computers, and digital imaging, and media, and stuff like that. And I still, come to my class and I still ask that question and there's still blank stares. Uh, I, I, I have just got it in my craw to try to find a way to bust that wide open. And I think for me, it has to do with package design. Mm -hmm. I think the way we move, not, not just communicate on the internet, but the way we physically move, we've lost contact with one another uh, this FCAT phenomena, I mean, uh, that's why I'm so against talent. You know, you know how many guys I played against football in high school uh, that were talented? This, and sure. my son played at the next level. He said, Dad, talent means nothing. I said, mm -hmm. I, if, I can't, if I told you how many times I killed a guy in front of me that was all this and all that, it, you, it, it'd blow your mind. Mm -hmm. It's about productivity, professionalism, um, uh, performance, uh, preparedness, practice, um, being comfortable in your own skin and stuff like that. And when you ask that question, they turn their head down, mm. that's, that's sending me a signal. That's, what does it send to you? That they're, they're not, they don't know who they are. They're not comfortable with anything. They're just like going through a system. It's like cattle being herded through a gate. And I just don't, I, I think we're missing something very fundamental here. I, see, don't, I, I don't know I, what it is. And see, and I, and I concur with you to some extent, but I don't know, I don't totally feel that they don't know who they are. I think they know who they are, but at times I don't think, um, at least when I talk to them, um, I don't think that they feel that there is enough people who are interested in who they are. Right. And that's, hard, that's hard in a lecture class of 500 students. Well. <laughs> I don't think it's impossible, but it, 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 it you know, I'm in one of those buildings where those classes come in and out, you know? Yeah, but, this, but there, there, are, there are always ways um, to make it happen. And, um, and I'm, a, I'm a firm believer where there's a will, there's a way. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm not saying that it's not just about the, the size of the class. I mean, we have people that do great jobs with large mm -hmm. lecture classes and, and find a way to personalize things. But, but um, Well, I'll tell you this. If you think you're going to do it by the old traditional um, stand up, I'm going to stand behind the lectern and give you the information and whatever else, it's not going to happen. I'm finding that um, teaching is almost, and, and, and this may not be the right breakdown, but I'm saying, I think teaching to some extent is 90% entertainment and 10% content. Because if I don't make it fun, if I don't make it... Um, entertaining, let me say it like this, if, I, if I'm not enthusiastic and I'm not um, doing a lot of things that are entertaining, because a lot of the things that these kids do are, you know, circle, you know are um, circles around entertainment, you know, um, the web, uh, um, um, the videos, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So, so I really try to, um, 
as much as I can, try to entertain in the way that it's not, you know, like, not like a comedian up there, but I do some things that would fall in the realm of entertainment, and in that entertainment, I insert my content. And so the students will come up to me and say, gosh, Dr. Rivers, that was such a great class. You know, I mean, you know, we really didn't have to do this. And that. Oh, they did. They just didn't know they were doing it. Yeah. So, so I think that how do we handle those kind of situations that you described? I think we've got to make it a, a, a presented to them in the way that they, are, that they have re been receiving it over the past eight or nine years. I mean, if, if their uh, culture has been where you do a lot of entertaining things, then I try to bring that in. I try to entertain and at the same time, making sure I get the content because like I tell my students, we have some learning objectives in this class and we have to attain these things by the end of the semester. So, um, so they're cognizant of that and I'm cognizant of that, but how they get to it is different than what I did years ago. I'd add another E word to mm -hmm. that and that would be empowerment. Mm -hmm. I, I've been really working hard on empowering, empowering mm -hmm my students are creating environments and scenarios in class that, that put them in charge as much as a student can be in a, in a classroom with dangerous tools and stuff like that. And I use an O word, ownership. Yeah. I yeah. give them ownership yeah, same in this. Thing. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Same so thing. I'm, not the only, I'm not the only one who owns this class. You own this class. Yeah. And, um, and I think the president, um, President Hitt gave a very good example. Um, I was in a meeting one time and he said this, he said that what our students have to realize is that they are consumers, okay? Um, but they're not consumers like one who goes to um, a, a, a fast food restaurant. Um, you know, where you pay something, you get a product. You're a consumer 